What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. I'm on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by helping you master your skills on the phone, conquer your fears, and changing your mindset. Now, let's get into the show. What's up, Zero to Diamond Nation? How we doing? Hope all is well today. It's a beautiful day down here on the Gulf Coast. Check this out, guys. I got J-Man in the house. This guy is a, a real estate agent since 2005 and a national speaker in the real estate world. And uh, I came on his show about a month or two ago and had a lot of fun with that. And uh, he reached back out to me and said, when can I come on your show? And I said, this week. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, man, we, we, uh, we, we really, I had a lot of fun rapping with you last time we got together. And uh, uh, this is going to be pretty fun. So why don't you give everybody just a little bit of background? Because I'm sure there's some people that might know who you are, a lot of people that don't know who you are. And maybe you just introduce yourself and let us know what you got going on. Sure. Jeremiah's J. Man Monero. I'm with the Monero team at Remax Realty Group in Rochester, New York. That's upstate New York between Buffalo and Syracuse. Uh, I've been in the business since 2005. I started at 25 years of age and I've been a national speaker now since roughly 2013. So going on five years, it's tough to tell when you actually become a national speaker, but yeah. I've, been, I've been helping people out my whole life, right? And uh, national right. speaker for real estate and real estate technology. Cool, cool. So, I mean, let's let's start with let's start with R four for a second because I know you went there, right? So, tell me how that experience was. You know, I heard about the uh, uh, handing the torch off from Dave to the new CEO, and uh, you know, just give it give us your best points of what you learned from from the uh, R four, what you thought was most important, what were really breakthrough moments for you there. Well, I'll say this. I've been with Remax now going on 10 years. And this was the first time I attended the R4 conference. Yeah. And I'm slapping myself. Yeah. Because I'm like, it is, it is. And I've been to a lot of conferences in my 13 years. This is the best conference I have ever been to in my entire life. Really? Yeah. Just, I mean, the sessions were great. Great speakers, but just the people, the vibe, the culture, the diversity, everybody's there to network. Everybody's yeah. there. And, and and it's like you could sit down to someone who made a million dollars last year, like, you know, Ricky Carruth, and no problem. They're willing to share everything with you. And and it's really a giver's game philosophy. It's not like, no, sorry, kid. I'm not giving you my secrets because you might be a competitor. Like there was none of that there. And, and then the networking opportunities internationally, there were 63 countries represented out of the 100 plus that Remax is in right now. So it was really just amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm definitely coming back next year. I, uh, I went last year for the first time ever. I've been with Remax for, at that point, it was seven years, now eight years. Last year was the first year I went. I'm probably a lot like you, you know, I'm like too busy trying to build a business and making sales and trying to make stuff happen and take care of clients to go to a conference. I've never been a big conference kind of guy. I never really wanted to, uh, you know, I've been to a few, but it's kind of like I'm more of a take action kind of person. You know, there's a lot of people that just go to conference after conference after conference and they never really put a lot of that stuff into action. They just feel like being there is what's going to take them to the next level. But I'm more of you show me something one time and I'm going to go crush it. Like I'm going to go murder whatever that was. Yeah. So I didn't really spend any like last year was the first time, but I agree with you, dude. It was the most incredible experience, man, just to be around those that many agents, top producers to see the whole production. It really was something, uh, something serious. And I know this year was better um, because they have my man Gary there, Vaynerchuk and Darren. Yeah. Um, and all yeah. that. Dude, I just paid some pretty big dollars. I'm going to I'm going to sit down with Gary and his whole team for 10 hours, April 4th uh, nice. in New York. I'm super, super stoked about it. So uh, but anyway, what we're what we're like, give me a, give me a couple of things like like something you didn't know or something that you heard again that reiterated the fact of something that's really working right now. Or what was the overall, 
you know, message? Well, I think, you know, me, me being in, a, in technology and a tech trainer, like I, I go and I don't want to say a lot of the stuff I know, but it's you, you get refreshers and you're always listening just for that little nugget or that, yeah. different, that different spin that people have on something that you're already doing. So they had a five, you know, five or four hour video summit. Like I love video. I eat, sleep, breathe video. And yeah. it was great, great to see what these guys from Canada, from all, you know, all over – you know, somebody from Nicaragua was there just to see what they were doing with video, the equipment they're using, how they're helping their clients with it uh, was amazing, you know, and, and there's some things that I'm going to implement. And then with social media, you know, I'm big about this. It's about the relationship, not the transaction. You will never see me post just sold, just listed. I'm important. Like it's, it's about the client always. And yeah one of the things that really resonated with me was being cons consistent, right? Cause mm. like, like you said, get busy. I'm like, okay, I do a couple of posts here, 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 and here. And then tomorrow I'm busy. And the next, you know, it's been two days since I posted on Instagram or Facebook and you know, if you, you have people out there, they're waiting for you to post and it's being consistent, you know, doing the, doing the things that you're supposed to do on a consistent basis, I think was one of my biggest takeaways. Uh -huh. And it just, just with video, like, it's been it's been here. We know it's not going anywhere. And the yeah. fact that either you're involved with it now, or you get involved with it now, or it's going to be like you know, nobody asks you anymore. Ricky, do you have an email address? Right? Because they just assume. So two, three, four years from now, they're just going to assume that you do video. And if you yeah. don't, then yeah. you're not going to get that business. Right. So I, I'd, I'd rather cement myself now. Really build that following. Have that YouTube channel you know, with, with a lot of subscribers, because then it's going to be too late for your, for the, uh, your competitors or anybody else to catch up. Yeah. So tell me more about your real estate business. Like, so you're, so you're still full-time real over, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, we're the Monero team. So it's my wife and I, mm -hmm. and you know, we, anything we can't do ourselves, we delegate to virtual assistants, that kind of stuff. Anything that's not an income producing activity. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, she's been in the business now going on 11 years, 11 mm -hmm. years. And uh, she's very much the rainmaker. We don't have like a, she's the buyer's agent or I'm the buyer's agent. We're both just yeah. team members. Right. And, uh, you know, we work primarily 85 to 90% by referral. Yeah. And I'll still get every once in a while, I get a lead that comes in from the we, uh, Remax website or something like that. And I'll convert it. But I don't, I don't do too much with you know, any of the portals or any of, you know, the funnels and the sales funnels. And I yeah. just, I'd rather work with people that I like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and sometimes with online leads, it's, there's no loyalty and they just don't care. You know, the, whoever responds to them first, even if you have, you know, talk to them and develop that relationship, they don't care. And I'd rather work with, with past clients. Yeah. I think that if you, um, I think that if you're going to build like a huge team and you have like a big team under you, then yeah, go for all the internet leads you, that you can stand, right. get to your teammates and let them run with it and right. you some money and all that stuff. If that's the business model you want to go after, but if you just want to be a real estate agent and you want to sell, you want to deal with clients, like, see, that's just in my blood. Like I, I don't want to be a team leader. Okay. Right. Like, I just don't want to be a team leader. I want to sell property. That's what's in my blood. I'm a salesman. And so when it comes down to that and you're a single agent or an agent with just a buyer's agent or just one assistant, you got to be most efficient. And the thing is, bro, is what I tell everybody is that everything in real estate works. Like everything works. You just right. have to figure out what works best for you and what's most efficient for you and go crush that. And so I think that there's not a shortage of closings. Closings are happening every day. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's not, it's not the business, it's you. So there's as much as you can handle at any given time. So just get busy. Like, you know, like, you know, that business is unlimited. So if you want to do more, just go do more. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, I get it. Uh, so do you, you don't, you don't do anything for new business then you just deal with past clients. Well, past clients, it, my wife is really big into the, you know, she does the pop buys. You know, we both try to do the personal notes and stuff like that. Stay in contact with our sphere of influence. Uh, but we don't really do much beyond 
I guess I do a lot of networking. Let me say that, you know, I go to a lot of events and I'm yeah. big into the social media and, and, you know, our online presence. So I guess it's not as much the traditional go shake hands and pa pass out business cards, but more of, you know, like today I did a live video on, you know, yeah, it's a hot market. Should you do for sale by owner? You know, and that was yeah. just getting, answering people's questions, being a resource. And yeah. so that's, that's really helped us to, you know, have the market see us as experts and, and being able to help them rather so, than the other way around. So tell me how that, that went. Like you did a live video and you did yeah. that like in your market for like potential clients or you did that for agents like to help them through, should they go after for sale by owners? Or you did it for potential no. clients. Should they be for sale by owners? So let me say this with live videos. I, I don't plan as much as most people think they need to, mm -hmm. right? I get the idea in my head and I just push go live, right? So uh, today's Thursday. On Tuesday, I wanted to get the word out that we, you know, we like most of the United States, we need more listings. And I gave three specific examples that over the weekend, uh, I had a buyer that was working, you know, we were looking in a certain area. We had four, four offers on this property. I had another buyer looking in another area. We had 20 offers on it. Th uh, third buyer, there were seven offers. So my message was, you know, we need more houses to sell. That was the message on Tuesday. Somebody reached out to me and said, well, if the market's so hot, shouldn't I sell it myself? What do you guys do in the transaction anyways? Right. So then today I follow up with should, you know, so it was for, for the consumers or for that person that watched the last video and said, oh, it's a hot market. I'm sure I could just put the sign up. My house will sell and I don't need a real estate agent to do anything else for me. Mm -hmm. So today I talked about, you know, could you go for sale by owner? Yeah, but should you? No. And here's the reasons why. And I gave, you know, the 184 things that we do in a transaction, uh, you know, proper pricing, presentation, pictures, all the millions of things that we do behind the scenes that cause the property to sell and have multiple offers. It's right. not just not just sticking the sign in the, in the yard or in the building, yeah. or, you know, you're, you're selling. Yeah, no, I was talking to an agent today and uh, he said that somebody said, hey, you're a real estate agent. You know, you just get to just kind of do your thing, go take some vacations and all this. And I really believe there's a big misconception out there with the public that uh, that real estate agents aren't really worth the money that, you know, we make and uh, stuff like that. I mean, I mean, dude, sometimes I got to sit back and think, am I worth all that? Like, I, <laughs> I do make a lot. But at the same time, it's like. Look how much time and money and energy I put into each and every client, each and every deal, the delicacy, the fact of the liability you're holding, the fact that you're holding somebody's precious, you know, several, several hundred thousand or maybe million dollar, you know, property. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, it's, uh, we're well worth the money. We're actually probably worth more than we get at the Absolutely. end of the day. And um, there's a big misconception out there. So, Okay, guys, check this out. We got J Man on the show today. Um, Instagram got some people there. Facebook, ask a question if you want. This guy's been in real estate for 13 years. He's been a national speaker in the real estate space for five years. He doesn't know. Um, we uh, he just went to R4. Um, had an amazing time there. First, first Remax convention he went to since he's been in the with Remax for the past ten years. Um, J Man, tell me a little bit about like, give me real quick like what you did before real estate. Like, what got you into real estate? That's a good story. So, bef well, when I was in college, I I used to door knock door to door. I would sell alarm systems for ADT Security. Yeah, everybody's heard of ADT. And so initially it was just a job to do during college, you know, something that was strictly commissioned. I didn't care, mm -hmm. and, but, it, but it was strictly commission. And I was good at it because I, somebody said, okay, listen, you knock on this many doors, this is what you get paid. Great. So all I got to do is knock on five times that to make five times the amount of money that I want to make. Great. Yeah. Let's do it. So I went from a salesperson to a sales manager to the top person in my office to the top person in, in the area. Eventually, they gave me a promotion and I moved from Little Rochester, New York. Uh, you know, we have about a million people. I moved to the New York City area uh, and I was a district manager for that ADT security company, 
-hmm. I was in charge of all five boroughs, Nassau, Suffolk County. This was at 20 years of age. Mm -hmm. And then I did so well that they said, okay, here's Albany as well, the greater capital district of New York. Uh, I did that for another four years and, you know, 9-11 hit and it kind of changed my perspective a little bit. And I said, you know what, I, I can make all the money in the world. It won't matter if I'm not here to enjoy it. And uh, a year after that, I, I moved back to Rochester um, to be closer to family. You know, New York was great. My favorite city on the planet. Yeah. But I had zero family there. And for me, in the end, all we all we have is family. Yeah. And and so, you know, moving back, I, I had the worst. I don't want to say that that's a bad. I had a real estate agent that had tons of potential for improvement. <laughs> but like I, I bought a HUD house. I overbid by five grand. And at the time, you know, if you overbid, depending on the financing, you have to pay the difference. He didn't tell me that. So when I got to closing, I, I was five thousand dollars short. Yeah. And I, and I just thought and this was a successful agent. You know, and I thought, or successful, I'm going to use quotation marks. I thought to myself, like, if this guy is doing well and he didn't take care of me, the client didn't do the things he was supposed to do in this transaction for me to have a pleasurable experience, then I'm going to crush this business. Yeah. And, and immediately, because I, I know to t how to take care of my clients. I know how to sell. All I needed to do was learn real estate. And uh, that was 2005. And the rest is history. I that's guess. nice, dude. That's a really good story, man. Um, yeah. So you killed it in the, you were already a salesman before you got into real estate. And then you just spotted the opportunity of the fact that there's real estate agents out there making a killing that aren't even taking care of their clients the way you know you would. And you mm -hmm. said, supply and demand, baby. I'm going to get in here and make it happen. I love it, dude. So how far are you, how far is, is that's where you're at, Ro Rochester? Yeah, Rochester, home uh, of Eastman Kodak. How that's far is it from Manhattan? 370 miles. Um, so it's about five and a half hours. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, I'm going to be there uh, April 4th in Manhattan. I'll actually be there first, second, third, and fourth. So, uh, you yeah, know, I'm sure we probably won't get up that, that time, but uh, we'll get up at some point. For sure. Okay. Let's get into like some nuts and bolts since I'm not getting any questions from anybody. Let's talk about like well, somebody's brand new in the business, they get in, they just got their license, boom, what do we do? It's all about the sphere of influence, I think. You know, who, who do you know, the people you know, and just making sure that they know that you're in the business to start. And then make sure you have a good training program. Like when I, my first year in the business, being 25 years of age, and part of it was a mental thing that I was young and people wouldn't work with me because of that. Initially, that was it's just my mindset. So I went and I got educated, right? I got my GRI designation. I got my associate broker's license, ABR, SRES, MRP, you know, because I felt then like I could sit down with a client and say, I know you feel that I'm young and then maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but here's my education. Here's the extra 90 hours that I took to get my GRI designation. Here's what I did just to demonstrate my expertise. And then they could see throughout the transaction how that was. And then that led to me build, you know, helping to build my business. Yeah. Uh, but don't be afraid to talk to people. You know, with my prior sales background, when the phone wasn't ringing, I'm knocking on doors. You know, I, I, loved, I loved for sale by owners that time. I used to just go up to the yard, pick up the sign, bring it to them, knock on the door. They were like, what are you doing? Like, I'm here. You don't need this anymore, right? And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, you want to sell, don't you? Yeah, you want to get the most money possible. Yeah. Well, I'm here. Can I come in? And I start, you know, <laughs> like scraping my feet on the ground like I'm going to come in. And, oh. you know, nine times out of ten, I would get in. Holy smokes, dude. I've never <laughs> heard that one before. <laughs> it's just assuming the sale, right? Like, why wouldn't they want to work with a professional? They, they want to yeah. sell. You know that, right? Okay, guys. So, check it out, dude. My new for sale by owner tactic, man. You go to the for sale by owner house, you grit the sign out of the yard, you walk Gently. up and knock on the door and say, listen, man, you don't need this anymore. Hand it to them and say, I'm here. Dude, that's genius. Yeah. I mean, you have to kind of slow play it a little bit. Don't be too aggressive with it. Like, oh, I'm here. Throw the sign on the ground or anything. But I was, 
you know, hey. it's not how it's what you not what you say, how you say it. Absolutely, dude. I'm all about reading people and figuring out, you know, like you know, everybody wants to know what to say. And it's like it's like it doesn't matter what you say. I mean, there, there's part of it like, yeah, say the best things you can say. But even if you have the best script and the best words and the best vocabulary, the best, if you don't have the tone and you don't read the person, it doesn't mean anything. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Do you know anything about purple brick style business model? Never heard of it, dude. Listen, Kyle Brown, check this out. There's a question here from Kyle. He says, what's your thoughts on the purple brick style business model? And what would you say to a prospect you know is comparing you to one of those services? Kyle, please, neither one of us who are really deep in the business have ever heard of this purple brick style. Uh, please um, let me Elaborate. know what that means so that I can, uh, so that we can answer your question. Natasha wants to know, J man, let's say an agent needs a listing ASAP, like yesterday. What do you think they should do today? Well, there's an, any number of things that I would do. You know, let's say when 2008, when when the crash happened, I couldn't sit around and wait for listings. So I actually had a book, and I wish I had it here, but I had it at my house. Um, like a three ring binder. Every day I would look at the expired listings. I would map them out and I would do the zip code that I lived in and the zip code next to me. So I'm condensing time frames. I'm not wasting time going all across town. And I would systematically go to every single expired listing in my area. Mm -hmm. And I, and I had a journal and I would just say, okay, talk to this person. Didn't talk to this. And I made sure that I talked to every single person that their property ever expired. And I found out why they, they felt that it didn't expire or, or didn't sell. I always say, well, your property was in the market and it should have sold, but didn't. Why do you think that is? You know, asking open-ended questions rather than trying to be a traditional salesperson and yelling at them at the door until they let me in. Um, that's why I would start there with expired listings. I know there isn't as many in this market being what we're going through. I would go to for sale by owners, but then I would also go to social media. Like, man, you can't wait around to be, you know, on your own HGTV reality show, you have the opportunity right here to pick up your phone, your computer, and just start broadcasting every day. And if you put the message out there that, hey, here's the market, our market's appreciating at double digits. So now's the time to realize profits that you will never see again, or you may not ever see again once the market balances out. The more you get that message out there in the different platforms, people are gonna listen and they're gonna start calling you. So I would say it's just a multitude of things, you know, expireds, FISBOs, your social media, the phone, obviously everybody that you know, you should get on the phone and talk to them and say, hey, and, and don't be telemarket like a telemarketer style. What's the word I'm looking for? Don't be spammy. Okay. If, even if that's a word, call, be their friend. Hey, I just want you to, you know, you know, I'm in real estate. We're, we're going through some times now where we don't have enough houses to sell. We have tons of buyers that we're working with. This isn't an attempt to secure a listing on imaginary buyers. I have five or six buyers that I'm working with right now in these areas. Who do you know that might be thinking about selling? Yeah, you know, that's that's what I would do. If I need listings ASAP, you know, and I got I got two kids, I got miles to feed. I'm, I'm going after it. I think the name of the game is is exactly what J-Man said. Just talk to people and make as many contacts as you can. I mean, guys, listen. Natasha, listen to me. Closings are happening every single day, right? It's not you. It's not the market. I mean, it's not the market. It's you. You're not talking to enough people. Like, like I don't care how you talk to people, like where you get them from, social media, walk up to them, door knock, talk on the phone. It doesn't matter. You have to start communicating with, if you're not making enough sales, you're not communicating with enough people. I mean, guys, it's not rocket science. It's really, really not. It's really that simple. And I think most people are just making excuses not to contact people for whatever reason. Uh, and then and then they're just like, how do I do it? How do I do it? How do I do it? And they're not contacting. And then I say, contact more people. And then they don't contact more people. And they come back and say, how do I do it? How do I do it? You know, it's like I said, remember last right. week when I said just contact more people and I don't care how you do it. So anyway, man, so back to this, Natasha, 
I hope you got a lot of value out of that answer. Thank you for your question and J-Man for answering it so greatly. Kyle wants to uh, clarify here. He was talking about the simple fee, like the fixed, the fixed fee companies. So let's go back to his first question. What are your thoughts on the purple brick style business model? And what would you say to a prospect, you know, is compa uh, comparing you to one of those services, which what he's talking about is one of those services that is like a thousand dollar listing fee or two thousand dollar listing fee or one percent listing fee. One of those discount brokers, in other uh -huh. words. So, so if so, if you're at a listing appointment, basically what Kyle is asking and that owner is comparing you to a discount broker, right? What do we tell, what do we tell the seller? You want me to go first? Okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, that comes up all the time and it's going to come up in a hot market, especially because they feel like, well, I just want the flat fee so I can put it in the MLS and then it's going to sell. So my first question would be, you know, what's your motivation? Why, why are we even considering this model? And if they're like, well, you know, we, the answer is we want to net more money. Bottom line, they're like, they want to walk away from the sale with the most amount of money possible. Would you agree, Mr. Yeah. Mrs. Seller? And they go, yes, right? And they go, okay, well, if I can show you how working with my with me and my team will net you the most money possible, and this is how my list price to sale price ratio is X. And we sell, you know, and you start going through and demonstrating the fact that you will sell the house for more money because you're an expert in the industry. You know how to negotiate when the offer comes in, number one, because you're negotiating your bottom line right now in that listing appointment, right? They're trying to reduce your service down to not next to nothing. Yeah. So you demonstrate how you can negotiate that. Next thing, you know, in our market comes the inspection. If the, something's wrong with the inspection, how do you negotiate that? This is what I do every day so I can protect your bottom line there. So when you're talking about a flat fee of $1,000, $2,000 compared to my fee for service, you're actually going to make more money by listing with me and my company today. It just makes sense, doesn't it? And then I do the head nod and I slide it. You know, if you still use paper and pen, you slide it, slide it over and say, you know, press hard, two copies, last one's yours. Uh, but for us, we use a tablet, we're paperless. So I think it's just finding their motivation and then demonstrating I just start hammering them with all the things we do above and beyond what those companies offer. You know, we have a stager, we have a professional photographer, we have a showing service, you know, the social media stuff that we do, the live, the live video um, virtual open houses that we do, social media advertising. Are they going to do any social media advertising? No, why wouldn't they? And I just keep going till they're like, okay, I, I get it. I understand now why it makes more sense, you know, to pay you what you're worth than to pay this flat fee. I'm actually going to lose money with that potential savings. And then right. if, if, if they need it a little bit more, sometimes I'll just do a relative story and say, you know, I know exactly how you feel. Some of my happiest clients have felt the same way. This is what they found out was that when they did that, you know, and I give a story of a guy who was a for sale by owner, I represented the buyer and how he didn't save money. And I go into the whole story. That's really okay. good, man. So basically to answer your question, Kyle, you're going to present them with all of the all of the different value points that you ought, that you can offer them. You're going to show them where you are actually worth more than the flat fee broker, the discount broker. But not only that, you're going to make them more money through the process. Right. And it's actually a fact there. I, there, there was yeah. some statistic I saw where um, for sale by owners, uh, actually got 6% less uh, than people that listed with a real estate agent. And I think that was 2016 that I heard, like that was a statistic that year. So there you go. We like, we got our percentage. They still made the same and didn't have to deal with anything. Right. So I think also the flat fee brokers, I think there's a lot of question about how they operate and how much service they can really give. I mean, how do they come up with the price? You know, who are you talking to? Right. Like, I know Red Eye. I know Red Eye. Is it is it Red Eye? Or what? What's the, what's the one? The one percent? Red Reddit. I don't know. No, let's see. There's 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 a there's a there's a discount broker that's like online. Anyway. It's, yeah, 1%. it's pretty big. It's like the biggest one out there right now. I forget the name of it, but you can't talk to anybody after five o'clock and you can't talk to anybody on the weekends. 
right? So, so is that what you want? Redfin, Redfin. Okay, so is that what you want? Do you want a uh, do you want a a do you want to deal with a, a group of people who you're going to talk to a different person every single time that you call in? You have a listing coordinator, a transaction coordinator, a listing agent. Uh, you know, there's a different person every step of the way. Nobody knows what's going on and you can't talk to anybody after five or on the weekends. I'm going to answer my phone 24 seven and I'm going to be right on top of every situation that there is. Right. There's a lot of different things that the flat fee and the discount brokers cannot give the customer. And that's what you have to make them aware of. And here's here's the good thing. Right. There's going to be some people, some sellers that still decide to go with Redfin over you. Like it's going to happen. There's no way around it. What do you do there? Okay. What do you do there is, is you maintain the relationship with that person. It doesn't cost them anything to buy something from you. Maybe they're going to sell to buy. You want to maintain that relationship so that you can, you can still help them in the future when they buy and they may refer you. And after their experience with Redfin, they're probably going to say, I will never do that again. So if you Absolutely. maintain the relationship with them the way that I teach you to do, then you have that client for life. It doesn't matter. Do you listen? I've had so many people that have went to other agents, like switched agents from me to another agent and then came right back to me, you know, and are my clients for life. Cause I don't care if they go to another agent, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to still make it. That's not why I was in the relationship in the first place. I was in the relationship to help them, to give them what they wanted. And if it wasn't me that they wanted, they want to go somewhere else, then I'm great with that, but we're still friends. And then right. you never know if they're going to come back, dude, they come back all the time. So don't let this stuff scare you. Continue to push forward with maintaining the relationship with everybody and, and let it, let it trickle down. Okay. I got to, I see your question, Diane. Let me, let me get this question on uh, Instagram real quick. Um, this fella wants to know, what do you think is the best way to spend $200? Okay, on a coach or on Mojo Triple Line Dialer? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were answer. I thought you were answering the question. No, like, she didn't give it to us. The question. Oh, okay. Is, okay. All the questions are for you, and then I'll all I'll right. get you back at so, the end. He says. What's I the answer to spend two hundred dollars on a coach or on Mojo Triple Line Dialer? A coach, if those are the two options, a coach without question. Yeah. Uh, but my my third, my third option would be social media. I mean, if if you watch anything that Gary Vee talks about right now, he he talks about the opportunities that are around us, and right now, it's social media. He said it five years ago it was Google AdWords, right? And now he's talking about social media is drastically underpriced. You're talking about Facebook. You're talking about Instagram for, for the, the return on investment, the amount of impressions, the amount of people that we can get our message out to is drastically mm -hmm. underpriced. And mm -hmm. once the big companies figure that out, they stop mm -hmm. spending money on commercials and TV and radio. Yeah. We're screwed. Cause then it's going to go 10 times higher. They're going to buy up all, all of the advertising. And then we're going to wish we, we took action. Sure. Sure. Um, I'm all about that, dude. I'm spending several thousand a week on social media. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going, I'm all in with social media. Right awesome. now. Yeah. So for sure. to answer your question, if it's between coach or Mojo triple line dialer, of course, a coach mentorship is the number one way to, to be, to, to succeed is the Mojo triple line dialer. Um, some, you know, a necessity. I think it is like if you're new and you can just plow through numbers and talk to as many people as possible, I think it's really important. So both of those, that's all actually a hard one, but a coach definitely wins uh, out of that. Diane wants to know, dealing with one of those has to be frustrating as the companies who outsource their customer service to uh, another continent. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying about Redfin. Like, you never know who you're going to talk to. They don't know who you. They don't know who you talk to last. Uh, that you can't talk to anybody after five and on the weekends. I mean, what kind of customer service is that? I mean, not to mention, what's their motivation to sell the property? They get a flat fee no matter what, whether it sells or not. So, what do they care about? What price they listed at? And yeah. depending if they have buyers agents at that company, they're motivated then for you to list at a higher price because the longer it sits, the more people that will call on it 
right? And if they call on it, maybe it, it, they don't like the property, they're going to pick them up as a buyer. So then there's there's their motivate there's no motivation for them to to price it properly or for the property to sell. So I always you know I would bring that up in the listing presentation as well. You know we're in an industry where if I'm representing you as a seller, I only get paid if we're both successful, right? If we we get get through to closing, so I'm motivated to price it right, and the code of ethics says that I I have to price it right. Yeah. Hey, what's your what's your opinion? I got a, I got a question on Instagram here. Uh -huh. um, um, they want to know your opinion, J man, your opinion on door hangers. So if, if you're door knocking and should you leave a door hanger, it all depends. If you're going to be cam, you know, if you're doing like tell 120 or whatever you tell, if you're going around and say you're doing an open house and you want to knock on all the doors around there and just notify people that you're doing an open house, door hangers would be fine. If yeah. I was door knocking expireds, or mm. for sale by owners, I wouldn't want to give them advance notice that I was coming and let them prepare all of their ob objections ahead of time. So, so I, I just put a tick, okay, they're not home, and I wouldn't leave anything. And if I talk to them face to face, I might give them an item of value or some something that shows a compelling reason why they should work with me and my company. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't leave anything behind if it was like a for sale by owner or expired. If you were just canvassing an area to promote an open house or an event or something you were doing that I would say it'd be fine. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the question on Instagram. Let me know if you guys have any more. So Kyle says, uh, in response to that question about huh. should you get a coach or should you get the triple it's line dial? He says, you can't dial the phone yourself. You can't coach yourself. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's a good point, Kyle. Uh, let's see. He said, okay, just to reiterate on the door hanger, a door hanger campaign in the way of mailings work. Sorry for the lack of elaboration. I guess you're asking about direct mail, not necessarily door hangers. I don't, I'm not sure. I, please clarify your question completely so that I can get you the correct answer or what J man and me think might be the answer. Uh, Heather Dickinson wants to know where are people getting phone numbers since most people don't have home phones anymore? What you think about that? That's a great question. I come from a door knocking background where we got the phone numbers from the people when we talk to them face to face. You know, I think there's so many people working the phone number route and it all depends on what your strategy is. Yeah. Like for me, if, if I know a lot of people are calling cause I know they're calling. I know a ton of people are snail mailing these people. Mm -hmm. I would, Go and knock on the door because I feel like everybody else is scared to, right? Nobody wants to get face to face and get told, no, I do not want to list with you or I do not want to sell my house. And for me, it's like, okay, no problem. Have a great day because I know that I'm one person closer to the next person that's going to say yes. So I'd rather do what the other people aren't doing. If everybody else wants to call on the phone because they're warm in their office and they're comfortable with that or they're sending mailers because that way they, they can't get rejected face to face, I, I'm going to door knock. So I. I can't answer that because I've never subscribed to a service to get phone numbers. Uh, Heather, listen, Red X, okay? Red X, Red X, Red X, Geo Leads, whatever. Um, it finds really good. It's a really good source. It's not, it's not amazing. There's still a lot of bad numbers, but it finds some cell phone numbers. And look, guys, quit worrying about all this stuff and just go do, right? Just go to Red X, get the numbers. Don't care if half of them are bad. Talk to the five out of 100 people you get and count that as a win, got it? So um, listen, J-Man, back to what you said about people being scared. I'm gonna answer you guys' questions on Instagram in just one second. Back to saying it like people are scared to knock on the door because they don't wanna hear a no like in, in their face. So like when I hear a no, I think ding, 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 opportunity is knocking at my door. And I want to rebuttal that and say, okay, great. So is there an agent in the area that you would work with if you were to buy or sell something? Oh, okay, cool. Well, look, I'm sure at some point long down the road, maybe five or 10 years, you're going to want to do something. I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? Okay, cool. What in the world is your email address? Right? What in the world? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you know, like, like, you, you know, you just got to be yourself. You got to understand that the no leads to a possible relationship if they don't already have a, a, a relationship in place with another agent. 
Why not go for the relationship forever, right? No is, a, is we're looking for the no's so that we can then establish that they have a relationship with another agent. Let's go guys. Like let's, let's make this happen, dude. Like I want to see you guys succeed. This is crazy. All right. How do you deal with being burnt out from prospecting? It's, it's a, it's a question on Instagram. So for me, when, when I used to do a lot of door knocking and when I did in, in five boroughs, you know, New York city, we're talking one of the toughest cities on the planet yeah. as far as, how polite people will be at the door. Right. Uh, there's days I'm not, it's a, it's a struggle, but you gotta just, you gotta shake it off. And there's, and it's not as cliche as it sounds. There'll be times I got to look at the mirror and go, I'm the best. I'm the best. I can do this all day, all day long. And <laughs> you, you got to have those conversations. That's how crazy I am. But you got to have those conversations with yourself because there's the wolf of fear and there's wolf of courage, right? The wolf of fear is the one who's always saying, you know what? You're, these people are right. You shouldn't do it. You know, forget, you know, stop knocking on the door, go home, take the easy way out. The wolf of courage is the one that you got to pump up. That's the voice in your head that says, you know what? I can do it. I will do it. You know why? Because nobody else is. So let's go. You mm -hmm. know, so for me, that's, you got to change, change that conversation. The most important conversation you're ever going to have is the one you have with yourself every single day. And it starts when you wake up and you get out of bed and you wanted to hit that alarm button, but you didn't, you got out of bed and, and you got up early and you did whatever your routine is. You know, for me, I try to do something active first thing in the morning because that's how you start to win the day. Those little decisions, you know, those little minor victories lead up to you winning the day. Hey, An An Anoj, 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 I think is your name. Um, listen, man. Like I, I want to say, I just want to add on because I think I love what J-Man just said about um, like just telling yourself you're the best, knowing that no one else is out there. You don't have much competition if you're the one doing it. There's so much success right there on the other side. Just keep going, push, 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 push. You know, um, I love everything, you know, he just said about that. But listen, dude. Here's 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 the real nuts and bolts of it, like past all the motivational. I'm great stuff. And that's this. If you're prospecting so much that you're getting burnt out, then that means that you should have so much business going on that you don't have time that's to true. make any phone calls anymore. You understand that? Like you don't have that's any time. So, so, so you should take a break from the prospecting and go close all the deals that you set up from all the phone calls. Right. And when after you close all those deals, get back on the phone. You should be nice and refreshed. Um, at that point, you feel me? All right. That's a good point. Yeah, dude. I'm just getting hyped up here, dude, with some of these questions. Yeah, me too. Okay. So back to the door hanger versus mailer situation. All right. No door hanger versus mailing. I would think having a hanger is more advantageous because it's in their face versus a mailing that is more likely to get tossed. All right. Listen, man, I'm going to take the reins on this one again. Um, uh, like, here's the thing, bro. Let, let me, let me break this down for you. Not sure what your name is, but everything works. Like nothing does not work. Okay. There's no like right answer, wrong answer here. Okay. I want you to understand that. Like there's not like something that works better or worse and all this stuff. Like it, like the problem is you're taking too much time to ask these questions and not enough time actually taking action to figure it out for yourself what actually works better and worse. What my suggestion to you would be is to take some door hangers and then some mailers and send the door hangers to one subdivision, do mailers to the other and see which one works the best. That's the real answer. But to answer your question, like even deeper is just to go do it. Right. Um, I don't think that, I think that they both work equally well. If you really want like the uh, stereotypical politically correct answer. It was just, chime in real quick yeah go for it so there's a company called smart zip uh and what they do, do you, are you familiar mm, no okay so what they do using predictive analytics certain people within an area are more likely to sell than others right they've been in either this age group they've been there a certain amount of time and what they they do is they can filter those people out just like on Facebook, you, you can market to people that are likely to sell or likely to buy. They filter those people out. So then that way, rather than using a shotgun approach with your mailing, it's more of a sniper. So you're, you know, you're only hitting 30% of the zip code, but they're, 
more, you know, a thousand percent more likely to buy or sell yeah. coming soon. And so I would say reach out to companies like that because then your return on investment is much greater than if you just blanket cover an entire zip code and you're just like, oh, and then you have somebody who's saying, well, you need to keep doing it. <laughs> keep doing it. It's like, man, at least focus on the top tier of the people that are that are likely to sell. And it doesn't have to be a whole zip code. They go by MSA, your market service areas, which can be dialed right in. I talked to them. I said, I want to just, I just wanted to kind of trump them and it didn't work. I said, I want to market to waterfront homeowners likely to sell in 14612 zip code. And they were like, okay. I was like, you could do that. They're like, yeah. So, I mean, you could really filter it in just like you can, you know, with, with your social media advertising. What's so the name of that website again, just for, so everybody can hear? It's, it's Smart Zip. I think it's Smart, smart Zip, Zip, guys. Instagram, yeah, smart, smart Zip. Zip. Facebook, Smart Zip. Check it out. Check it out. I haven't looked at it, but it sounds pretty interesting. You know, um, check it out and see what you think. Uh, let's see. Marky Mark wants to say, Ricky, my dude, what <laughs> sort of monthly, what sort of monthly slash quarterly emails do you send out to your clients? Marky Mark, check this out, dude. I send a weekly email every single week on the same day forever to my entire database. And it's just market information, a picture, a little article, new listings, close sales, featured properties, you know, da da da. Nothing really. I mean, it's kind of fancy now because I've been doing it for 11 years straight, but it takes time to develop that. So just get something out. My style is every week on the same day forever. Your, your style may be every two weeks. I don't know. Every week really works well for me. So uh, that's my answer there. Yeah, the website is called Smart Zip. Was it Smart yeah, Zip? If you, if you search them on Facebook, they're at Smart Zip Analytics. Okay, at Smart Zip Analytics on Facebook and uh, smartzip.com, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, smartzip.com is their website. Okay, cool. Guys, we're coming down to about a 15, 10 to 15 minute mark left in the show. This has been freaking amazing with J-Man today. Um, type in any last minute questions you guys might have for me or J-Man. I'd be glad to answer. Anything goes, any question you got, would love to hear it. Uh, let's see. What do you think the number one reason, number one reason, let's just say five words or less, number one reason why people choose a particular real estate agent? Number one, they like you. Boom. Nothing else matters. Boom. They can, they can, they can find a realtor on every block that will put a property in MLS, show them properties, go over them, uh, you know, do certain things, this, that, the other, right? They want to find that real estate agent that makes them feel comfortable, that they can depend on, that they feel like is is, is professional, that it's knowledgeable, um, and that most of all, they like, right? And that's where reading people and being able to, oh my gosh. That's, yeah. that, that, you know, like, like I think the number one skill is reading people. I think that that is the number one skill to the top producers. I think that's one thing they all have in common, like me, I can meet any any anybody any any personality. I can meet them and they like me because I'm I can, you know why? Because I genuinely care about them and I don't care if they want to buy or sell anything. I really don't. Um, I was showing property earlier this week to some snowbirds that come down here from Michigan, yeah. and uh, they were down here. They were referred to me, and I showed them property. I mean, a little side note is, is I went to show them five condos at 930, didn't get through till three o'clock. It was crazy. Like they sat on the couch in every single unit and like looked at the ceiling and stuff. I was like, what are we doing here, dude? This is crazy. But <laughs> they asked me, they were like, what percentage of people actually convert and buy? And I was like, man, listen, tell you the truth. I do not know. But here's the really thing about it is, is I don't care if they buy. I, I And he looked at me like, like, what is this about? I was like, listen, man, I sold 130 properties last year. And it, it's not even about the fact that I don't need the business. It's about the fact that I've learned over the years that it's all about the people. I said, you know how many deals I do from people that I showed to five years ago that didn't buy, who came back five years later and said, I'm ready to buy now. I do deals like that all the time. 
And it's because I wasn't pushy five years ago. And I really genuinely wanted to, I even tell people, I told a guy today, I said, he, he, I followed up with him because he was going to buy. And he told me today that he, that they decided not to buy. And I said, look, next time you guys are down, you, you, we, I, I said, you want to see some properties? I said, we can even look at some properties with the understanding that you're not going to buy anything. You just want to see some properties. I said, I'll be more than glad to show you anything you want to see. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you got to be. That's the mindset of a winner. That's the mindset of a top producer. And I think that that's, that's the biggest quality, man, is being likable, just like you just said. So Natasha wants to know, when door knocking expired listings, this is an interesting twist. When door knocking expired listings, what time would be best? So for me, again, remember I had it mapped out and I had a, a journal of different places that I would go, different places I went. So I, I, I had a system. I would go in the morning and then I would go midday and then I would go after five because you just never know the situation. People could work B shift, C shift, you know, yeah. try to see if there's lights on, if there's noise in the house. Like if somebody's working nights, I don't want to knock on, on their house in the middle of the day. And that, that'll happen every once in a while. But for me, it's just as long as you're systematic and you keep going back and you have your little almost like a paper route. Like I was a paper boy growing up and you have those places you keep going to. And, uh, you know, just be systematic and be sure that you touch every prospect that you plan to rather than, okay, here's a list of expires today. I go knock on the door, nobody answers. All right, crumple it up. That one didn't work. Well, it didn't work because you didn't work it. You know, so I would just say continuous, try different times, depending on the neighborhood, it's gonna be different. You know, obviously the obvious answer would be after five and on weekends, but yeah. it all depends. You know, if you have time during the day, it wouldn't hurt to go during the day because you just never know. Yeah. So, so would you agree with me here, J-Man, if I said after five on the weekends is the politically correct answer, but the real answer is don't pre-qualify if you think that they're eating breakfast, eating lunch, at work, da 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 and just go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, for me, the right the right time to do it would be when I have time to do it, and then when it's in my when I blocked out time to do it. Yeah. And the, for the people that say, "Oh, well, I don't want to bother them," I'm here. I'm. It's not a bother. I'm here. I'm. The, I'm your real estate superhero. Okay. I'm here to save the day. Your house didn't sell before, but I'm here now, so you're happy that I'm here. It's never a bother. It yeah. bothers me when agents say, "Well, I don't want to bother them." Or yeah. is now a good time? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good time because I'm here and I'm. I'm, I'm yeah with good intentions. Like I'm here to yeah. save the world, right? Like I'm here to help you with your most important asset and bring happiness to your life. I think, I think have confidence. I think, I think lack of confidence is the reason why a lot of people question what time they should go there because they feel like they want to be there right at the perfect time when they're, you know, just ready for them and there's never going to be a perfect time. Look, who's getting bothered more? You, who has to go out of your house, drive to their house, get out of your car, walk up to the door, knock on the door. Who, who, who is it more of an inconvenience for you or the homeowner who just has to walk to their door and open it and say hello, right? right. You're being inconvenienced way more than the property owner. So, so think about that for a second. You're going out of your way. They're not. Okay. There's some value there and you should, you should value that. You should value yourself. You should have a little bit more confidence. The fact that, they should see if they don't see the value in you knocking on their door and, and talking to them about their one of their biggest investments in their life, then they're not the kind of client you want to deal with. Right. This life, this business, real estate, everything is about filtering down the people that want to work with you and filtering out the people that don't want to work with you. OK, it's your job. There's going to be people that want to work with you that like you. There's going to be people that don't want to work with you that don't like you. Right. I mean, every I, I make phone calls. I'm the number one agent in my area. I have people hang up on me all the time. OK, I'm filtering out the people that want to work with me and who don't want to work with me, man. You know, so. OK, Dave says, Ricky, I know you said you use constant contact, but what would you use to keep track of your list of emails? Um, is it something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet? Listen, Dave, here's the thing, man. You spend all your time trying to organize a million clients. You're not going to sell any property. OK, put them in constant contact, send them a weekly email and don't try to keep track of everybody. Uh, stay focused on moving forward and talking to new people every day. Develop new relationships. Get them in that email system and go. Right. Don't like people that spend too much time organizing so much. 
like I try to, you know, I'm very unorganized and that might be a, like a fault or like a missing link for me. But I'll tell you, man, I think it's a reason why I sell so many properties because I'm so focused on the next thing instead of trying to document every little thing I do on paper or in an app or technology. Let's see. Jonas said, I don't know which outlook you were talking about there, Jonas, but I appreciate the comment. So, dude, I mean, man, I, I appreciate you reaching out to me, man, and, and doing this because yeah. uh, this was a lot of value for sure. Um, any last minute questions on Instagram or Facebook? You got just a couple minutes left. Um, Jonas says all of it. So give me some last minute <laughs> thoughts, man. And, and if we get any more questions, we'll answer them afterwards. But give me some last minute thoughts as far as moving forward in real estate. I know that you're a national speaker in the tech kind of sector in the space. Mm -hmm. um, just what do you think? Let's say I'm a eight month agent. I've sold a couple things. I'm kind of on the brink. I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm, I've sold a couple things, but I'm right there where it's like, man, this is really hard. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. Uh, what What's your advice moving forward in this new technology world going into really 2019, guys? I mean, 2018 is 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 fixing to be here and gone. We're going to be in 2019. You know, fixing. what do you? <laughs> hey, you know, what do you say? Fixing. No, I don't even say like we would fix a car, but we'd be fixing to get twenty. It's just, it's. I love it. I love it. That's all. <laughs> all right. So, so what do you tell me? I'm eight months in. I don't know if this is gonna work out for me. Don't give up, man. It's like right there, at the darkest time when you're when you you're like, did I make the right choice? That like it's just that ten percent more. Every success story you've ever heard was because somebody grinded it out and they were eating Raymond noodles and bologna and just doing what they had to do, sleeping on somebody's couches. You hear, you know, you hear Ricky's story, like you did what they had to do because they know that if you, if you put forth the effort and you do the right things, the results are going to come. They have to, it's mathematical. It's an equation, mm. right? So just know that, you know, don't ever give up. And if, if, if you want to invest your time, invest in yourself because that can never be taken away. You know, the more you can learn, you know, not just sales tactics, but like what Ricky said and what I said, the number one skill set I have is not that I'm a salesperson, it's, it's the ability to build rapport. So I, like I would go out and, you know, get books on neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, which has to do with reading people and what their personalities are and how, how to build rapport with them. A uh, classic one is how to win friends and influence people, right? That's, if you don't have that, that has to be in your library. And I do a lot of audio books with Audible because I'm in the car so often. Yeah. There's one I'm listening to now for the second time. It's the five second rule by Mel Robbins. It talks about not being, you know, the paralyzation by analyzation. Too many of us, like, just like you said, are like looking at the spreadsheet and they're thinking about this and what's the right letter to write. It's like, no, five, four, three, two, one, do it, take action. So, I mean, that's, if, if you take one thing away from this, five second and it has nothing to do with eating food off the floor because that's a different five second rule that my son <laughs> son uses all the time dude, but it's just uh, check, the make the decision check this one out dude have you heard of my three two one club no dude it's 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 hashtag three two one club okay. and it means have no fear when something scares you you say three two one and you do it Mm -hmm. Check this out. It's a, it's an Instagram thing. So I have people that um, have post notifications on my Instagram. Every time I post, they like it and they comment ha hashtag three two one club for their chance to like win a signed book by me or a phone call with me or something like that. But it's all focused around it's all focused around trying to trying to breed Instagram uh, engagement. But yeah, it's it the, the the purpose of it is is to push this. Have no fear. And and three, two, one, close. So when you said that just now, I'm like, you know, wow, this is like you said five, four, three, two, one. But do you say that in your speeches? I I haven't. I will because I, I, I just it's it's starting it's starting to resonate more. And and I use it every single day, every single day. This morning I got up at four forty five to go to the gym. I got up. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. I said I've been in the gym enough. I ran enough. I don't care. Let me sleep another hour. And I said five, four, three, two, one. Get out of bed. 
and I got out of bed. That starts, you know, the one thing. And I was going to do my yeah. live video at, at 7.30 or 8 o'clock today. And I'm like, well, do I want to do this live video? I don't know. Do I have all the things? I, I said, you know what? Forget it. Five, four, three, two, one, hit. Go live. Daniel. And so I think. Daniel Loper on Instagram. I have five seconds left on Instagram. It's fixing to cut off. It only lasts an hour. DM me your question now. <laughs> Instagram is over, guys. <laughs> is it limited to 60 minutes on IG? Yeah, you only get 60 minutes on live uh, Instagram. Um, that was good. We have 44 people watching on Instagram. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. On and off. We probably had 10 like at one time, you know, whatever. Uh, Dude. I guess we're going to call it a day. I don't see any more questions. I so appreciate your time. Is there anything I can do for you? You're doing it, man. Just, you know, being you and being the resource that you are. And, you know, that's, I found that with successful people, they're always willing to share their secrets. And that's part of, you know, I, I one of the many reasons I would say you're successful is that you're willing to help others. You know, the givers gain philosophy is what it's all about. Yeah. So thank you. Cool, man. I appreciate you so much, guys. We're going to call it a day. Reach out to me or J-Man. I'll put some links. When I when I post this video on YouTube, I'll put links to all of J-Man's stuff on YouTube so you guys can connect with him if you uh, have any questions for him. And uh, you guys just hit me up if you need anything. Have a good rest of the week. Go out there and crush it. You know, work so hard for 2030 that you can't help but to crush 2018. Like See you that. guys. Shit. It's not it's not clicking off. So I'm just I'm just going to shut it down and uh, I'll hit you up on Facebook. All right. Sounds good. Hey, buddy. See you.